Hi everyone, I'm Jess, the executive producer of Project Loki. In these videos, I cover some of the biggest changes coming in our upcoming playtest and our thinking behind them. We have so much to cover. Last month, we hosted our first playtest in the EU, and we loved seeing so many of you try Loki for the first time. You shared a ton of great feedback, which we've been digging into over the past few weeks. One area we weren't satisfied with was game performance. Even though we're still in pre-alpha, it's clear we need to do more to stabilize the game, our server performance, and your frame rates. We managed to cut crashes in half with two mid playtest patches, but that shouldn't be the default option. So prior to this playtest, we've already run two smaller tests for stability, including one to upgrade to Unreal 5.2. Definitely better that we hit these issues now than at launch, so thanks for your patience. As for future EU playtests, we're still seeing how feasible it is to run two separate regional playtests every time, but this upcoming three-day playtest will have servers and exclusive times for EU and NA. All right, let's talk changes. First, we have two new heroes in the prototype phase. Prototypes mean we're testing gameplay loops and mechanics to see what's working before we move on to art or thematic exploration. What this means is that their visuals will be very temp, usually a borrowed or recolored model with lots of placeholder VFX and sound effects, and sometimes a funny hat. Most studios do this part of development internal only because it requires more squinting to see and because we expect to go through several different iterations in development. That said, you've been great at giving feedback on work in progress kits, and we learned so much more getting them into your hands. So in they go. Please leave feedback, but don't get attached to anything just yet. I won't go into details on the kits, but one of them is a melee character, so I'll hit a big community requested topic and give some thoughts on melee characters in Project Loki. We've said this before, but Loki started out as a much slower MOBA style game until we embraced our action gameplay. Now we describe ourselves as more of a mobile with the shooter soul, with a big emphasis on shooter. Our time to kill is fast, our hero abilities are sharp, and our basic attacks are pretty lethal. We love this combination because it means you can outplay other teams even if you're outnumbered, but it does make designing melee heroes a challenge. We were finding our early melee prototypes would either die before they could engage, or they would slam on top of targets and blow them up before they could react. Also, the melee kits themselves were feeling a little flat, as players were just swinging mindlessly when they got into range. So entering this year, our goal was to make melee heroes more engaging from a playing as perspective and add more back and forth between melee heroes and their ranged counterparts. We now believe that melee heroes needed more opportunities for re-engagements in a skirmish. So less 100 to zero moments on either side, but more jockeying for position and employing hit and run strategies. But trying to bake all of this into melee kits was putting a lot of other constraints on their design. Well, what if everyone was a melee hero? Hear me out. This playtest, we're experimenting a universal ability for all heroes, a melee ability. This melee starts bound in your first power slot, but we're considering giving it its own button. With it, you can knock enemies back and stun them if they hit a wall, as well as reflecting projectiles if timed correctly. It looks like a punch, but we're calling it a melee to keep our thematic options open. At a service level, it gives all heroes an accessible disengage option, especially against other melees, which opens up a lot more design space. We're excited to see what kinds of plays you can pull off this test, so share your clips on Discord. Switching gears, something you've seen, but we haven't had a chance to talk about, are storm shifts. Functionally, storm shifts act as game-to-game -game variants that change the behavior of that game. These can be small changes like Final Destination, which lets everyone know the final location of the circle, all the way to things like Infinite Glider Field, which does what it says and totally changes your traversal options. Getting philosophical, storm shifts are an important feature for us for a couple of reasons. First, adaptation is a critical skill in Loki, and we don't want it to feel like there's always a single optimal strategy. Second, and more importantly, storm shifts are how we preserve our studio development culture even through launch. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's true. My belief is that we'll always take big swings to evolve and improve the game, even years after we've launched. But it can be hard to do that if we as players start becoming change averse because we're used to playing the game out a certain way, which really incentivizes designing the game in a way where it stays the same year after year. Luckily, this doesn't have to be true for us. Storm shifts let us share some really wild experiments in a controlled way, a reflection of our daily playtesting culture where every morning we all play Loki as a studio and try out new changes from the previous day. Sometimes, these changes are fun, but arguably too crazy for every game of Loki. Well, how about a storm shift? Now we have a way to play and learn, and sometimes even discover a mechanic so good it gets baked into the base game. Speaking of experiments, every playtest we've been inspired watching our community share screenshots of leaderboards for individual heroes and wins, and wondered if we could do something more. 
This is still in prototype, but we're trying out a new meta system called Hype. You gain hype by eliminating other teams and placing high in your lobby. Knocking out another team steals a portion of their hype and adds it to your squads. Every lobby, the team with the most hype, the hype squad will be called out. And that's as far as our current experiment goes, but if you like it, we're kind of hyped at the possibilities. Imagine a world where we reset this daily and highlight the biggest hype squad, or if the hype squad could select the storm shift of the lobby. Lots of possibilities, so let us know and keep that hype rolling. Okay, I know this video is getting long, and this is normally where I say, there's a lot more in the patch notes. There's a lot more in the patch notes, but there's honestly so much this month that I'm just going to run through a list of stuff we're excited about. So let's go. One, we've removed the landing slow. Two, all long stuns have had their duration reduced. Three, we have new blockouts for Huntress and Ronin, as well as the UAV and Forge. Four, we have lots of new perks and you can now pre-select your perks at the game start by pressing F2. Uh, next, you now auto pick up duplicate items and enchanted items get their passive immediately. And lastly, we have a new vault breaking mechanic, but there's even more. Check the patch notes on Discord for full details and let us know if there are any topics you'd like to hear from us on, and I'll see you later. Bye.